Oh, yes. You sound, uh, were you asleep? It took you so long to answer the phone. Oh, no, no. I was just sitting here, lost in thought. I understand. Well, first of all, I want to tell you how sorry I am about Camilla. Yes. Well, the other thing is, uh, I don't think you ought to be alone. I'd like to come out and see you. Well, it's very kind of you to think of it, but I'd rather not have any company. I have a lot of things to sort out in my mind, and I think I'd better do that alone, if you understand. Certainly. Well, if the time comes when you want company, you know my number. Well, it's not only my need for privacy at the moment. I'm fairly certain the police would rather I didn't have any visitors. You see, I'm under surveillance. The police? What? Why would the police have you under surveillance? Well, you see, they're hoping for Cameron to return. Cameron? Well, he's long gone by now. He's not going to come back to Monticello. That's ridiculous. Huh. You're wrong, Skye. He may be back for the copy of the phone book that he thinks I possess. I don't like the sounds of this. It could be dangerous, especially since you can't produce the phone book any longer. Look, um, why don't you get out of the house? Let me come on over there and two of us will walk. Look, I appreciate your concern, but I, I have agreed to cooperate with the CEA. I am their bait for Cameron. In return, I've been promised immunity from prosecution if I do the job properly. So I don't think I'm any in any danger with my house surrounded by police. All right, but if there's anything I can do, let me know. Keep in touch. Bye. Uh, it's Mrs. Devereaux. Hello, Miss Wynn. Well, hello, Mrs. Devereaux. Uh, that will be all, Gunther. Yeah. <clears throat> Come here, you. Well, everything would be perfect except for one thing. What's that? I want you and Gunther to quit calling me Mrs. Devereaux. We're going to have to do something about that real fast. Well, as it turns out, you're not going to have to worry much on that score anymore. What are you talking about? You see. You are not now, nor have you ever been, Mrs. Devereaux. Edge of Night is brought to you by mild ivory liquid. It helps hands stay young looking. And by new Lemon Bright Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean leaves no wax floors so clean they shine. Are you making all this up? Are you crazy? Are you stark raving mad? Oh, what? Is that a multiple choice? Uh, no, I'm not. You better sit down here. It's a bit shocking. I want you to faint and hit your head in the fireplace. <laughs> Let me start off by asking you if you remember a man named Copeland. His honor, Copeland. Well, let me see now. Wasn't that the man that married Ian and I? Give that lady a cigar. <laughs> you see, however, Judge Copeland was a counterfeit. He had no legal right to perform that ceremony. What are you babbling about? He was hired to perform that ceremony. See, the only recommendation that he had to perform any kind of ceremony at all was a union card for Actors' Equity. What are you talking about? He's an actor. He was hired to perform the ceremony. An actor? An actor. <laughs> An actor. Who hired him? Geraldine. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. See, when she made arrangements for the wedding, she really arranged things pretty well. I mean, she knew the real reason that you were marrying Ian, so she arranged to have a phony preacher, phony legal document, and a phony ceremony. See, you're not legally married to Ian at all. Do you know what that means? I know what it means. Do you really know what that mm -hmm. means? That means if I'm not married, then I don't have to get a divorce. That's right. You don't 
also means that you can marry anybody you want to. Oh, is that a proposal? Raven, I want you to be my wife. Geraldine, make the arrangements for the ceremony. No. I want this one to be for real. It lasts a long time. <laughs> what about Ian? Ian who? <laughs> no, uh, does Ian know that this was a fake? Did you tell him? No, I didn't. Well, then we better tell him right away. I mean, I want him to know that Geraldine concocted this whole thing, not me, and I want him to know that I'm sorry. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Well, maybe I should not get it over with right now. Well, I don't know if your timing is right, though. I spoke to Ian a while ago on the phone, and I offered to go on over to spend some time with him. He said he didn't want any visitors. Well, I won't call, then I'll just go. You understand, don't you? I have to. Understand? Well... We're agreed on that point. Right. Nicole? All understood and agreed on so far. Next, I think we should go over some of the depositions for the trial. Do you have them, Cliff? Right here. Study these carefully, Nicole. They're statement made by people involved in the case, both for and against. Let's see, the cop on the beach, the old derelict, the owl, Mrs. Goodman, Gavin Wiley. Everyone. Now, if there's anything in there that you disagree with, just let us know and we'll take it apart and uh, discuss it. I looked him over before there's something I disagree with. It's in Gavin's deposition. He left something out of it. What's that? The fact that when he saw Nicole leave the studio that night, she was leaving it for the second time. The first time, she was trying to help me to the car. Yeah, except that Gavin didn't see her leave for the first time. You see, the only thing he can swear to in the deposition is exactly what he saw, or else it would be hearsay I know evidence. That. I still a... say that we ought to get it into Miles, somebody's deposition. Miles, I think deposition. we get along it wasn't faster if we didn't have these interruptions, please. Uh, is there something wrong with any of those, Nicole? Uh, no. I, I mean, I don't really know yet. I haven't really looked them over. I, I think I need my glasses to see them. I'm going to get them. I'll be right back. Excuse me. Let's go easy on Miles, okay? We need his cooperation. Okay, okay. What's the matter? Um, it's, it's Jody. I inadvertently heard her on the phone. She was getting dressed to go out, and she made a phone call, and I'm sure she was talking to Preacher. She said she wasn't going to have anything to do with him anymore. I know it. All right, forget about it. You got to, you got to concentrate on what's important now, the trial. As for me, I, uh... I think Cliff is right. I think I'm a disruptive influence. I think you'll have a more productive meeting without me. Why? Where are you going? I'm just going to go out, stretch my legs. Well, let's see about getting you a little something to eat, huh? Here you go. Maybe I can give me something to eat, too. What do you think about this? Ooh. Mm. Come here. Come on. Come on. What the hell are you doing here? I just thought I'd stop by. Boy, I tell you what, when they were passing out brains, you must have been at the head of the line, all right, holding the door for everybody else. You obviously didn't get what I told you. I said I didn't feel like having company, especially I you. I asked you what you were doing for dinner. And, and I said, said nothing. Now, what does this look like, huh? Cat food. All right. What does this look like? How should I know? It smells like Chinese food. That's because it is Chinese food. Of course, if you don't like Chinese food, I, I could get no, something I don't, else. No, I would kill for Chinese food, but that's not what I'm... Well, that's great, isn't it? Please. Let me ask you a whole, whole, whole second. Let me ask you a question. Hmm? Who invited you over here anyway? I invited myself. And since I brought it, you can't refuse. You, uh, you want a soda or something? Sure, that would be great. All right, I'll go put the food on the plate. Uh, wait a second, I can't do that without the bag. Thanks.
tell us with the music and the, and the candle? Uh, well, I thought it would uh, give the place some atmosphere. It's a little cool in here. What do you expect from me, little lady? I expect some peking duck and fried rice. Do you need some help? No, I don't need any help. I don't like somebody poking around in my kitchen. Besides, I know where everything's at, all right? Uh, so do you do much cooking for yourself? Yeah, I used to be a short order cook, but that was before I took that course in video repair. Short order cook? You know, I've always been fascinated by that. I mean, I think it's so interesting the way they just, they have their, their own language. You know, that, do you know any of that lingo? Yeah. Sure. So, um, why, why are you so interested in what I've done in my life? Huh? Um, well, because uh, there are things that you've done in your life that I haven't done in mine, and that interests me. Oh, you're real cute. Real cute. Meaning what? Meaning that I know when somebody's stroking me, little lady, and I know a con artist when I see one. You come in here looking pretty, your hair and everything smelling nice, thinking I'm going to fall in round one. Not preacher this time, baby. All right, you can say that little act for the kids down at the playground. This is the big league, baby. All right. All right, look, I... I know that you've been, um... You've been hurt. You've been mistreated. Treated unjustly. I'm not denying that. And so if I'm here and I, I seem overly nice, it's because I am... I am truly and, and deeply, sincerely sorry for what I did to you. Look, now, you, you don't have to accept that. Maybe you don't want to. I, I don't know. I, I, but I'm making my apology anyway. But it's up to you. If, if the idea makes you comfortable, I'll... I'll leave. No hard feelings, you know? So, um, what do you say? You call the truce? I'll get the food, all right? Hey, Wolf, that'll be four bucks, please. Listen, you don't, uh, preacher's working here tonight? No, a uh, preacher called in sick tonight. Well, I'll bet he's in bed, all right, but, uh, not alone. Well, you gonna go in or not? Well, sometimes people get a little nervous when they're in a witness stand. The best way to deal with this is to be as prepared as possible to answer any questions that might be asked. Why don't you ask a few questions, see how she does, hmm? Good idea. Okay, uh, Mrs. Kavanaugh, would you please tell the court how it is that you happened to be at the WMON studios on the night in question? Yes, um, I had an appointment with Miss Fulton. Uh-huh. And had you set a definite time? Yes. Um, well, yes. I think there was a definite time. Uh, wait a minute. Time. You said, I think. In your statement to the police, you said that the time was indeed definite. Yes. Well, I'm just trying to remember if... <sighs> Look, Nicole, you have to answer these questions with authority. That way the jury is more likely to believe you when it comes to the important reasons why certain things happened that night. Now, this question is definitely going to be asked. You have to have an answer firmly in your mind. I know, Dee Dee. It's just, it's all so new. I'm just not sure how I'm going to react to the pressures there. We don't have to call you, you know. I mean, you can't be forced to testify against yourself. No, I want to. I want the jury to understand what kind of pressures Nora Fulton put us all under. Then you have to understand that if you are called to testify, you're also going to have to face cross-examination by the prosecutor. And that could be unpleasant. So another gun. Gunther did lie. What are you talking about, Chris? This is a deposition from the cop on the beat. I saw a tall man with dark hair on the street. I never saw Nora Fulton or anyone else. So? Well, Gunther paid me a little visit the other night, and we got into an argument. How did you get that witness to corroborate that you were at the bus station? Now, that was brilliant. Look, I want to talk about hey, your girlfriend. I want... How were you able to get into the studio, strangle Nora, and get out without anybody seeing you? Hey! Enough about that already, okay? Take it easy, will you? Look, Gunther, you can tell me. Now, what's the use of being so clever if the rest of the world doesn't know Listen, it? Listen, wimp. I didn't have anything to do with it, and you know it. How are you able to fool Calvin and the chief of police? Now, why don't you just talk to the cop on the beat, okay? He saw me leaving Nora when she went to the studio. You're boring. Listen, that's not what I came here to talk about, huh? See? You see? He said that the cops saw him and Nora together before Nora went back to the studio. So why would Gunther lie? Yeah. Why would Gunther lie?
Hey, you know, boss, uh, I'm curious about this accident thing. Oh? Yeah, I've been reading the news items about this uh, Camilla Devereaux drowning with O. Spence. What do you think was going on there? Oh, come on, Guthy. You know perfectly well what was going on there. You worked for Camilla when she was married to old man Bowie, and you know that Spencer worked there, too. The two of them were having some sort of a relationship, and you must have seen her here half a dozen times. <laughs> You know, sometimes, Gunther, I think that you're nothing but an old gossip. Uh, yeah, that's one flaw in my character. Oh, I can think of one or two others. <laughs> well, anyways, I guess uh, Camilla and Spence are getting it together again, huh? Only this time they're at the bottom of the Monticello River. But I tell you, life's funny, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Life really is funny. I guess I'm going to have to start doing all my own business accounts now. What's left of it? It's pretty as good, isn't it? Well, you ought to be. You paid for it and sweat off my back. I thought you did a very good job of serving it. Oh, thank you, a great one. <laughs> well, I just want you to know I'm having a good time, even if you're not. <laughs> Gee, what are you doing here? Good evening. Is Jody here? Um, Miles, what are you doing here? Sorry to interrupt your dinner, but i uh, got to talk to you for a few minutes. Something about the trial. Hey, man, who are you kidding, huh? What? You heard what I said. You're here to check on Jody, right? To find out if Big Bad Preacher is attacking her or something. Well, she's perfectly safe, but I'm not so sure about me. All right. No need for a big mouth. I do have a question to ask you, Jody. Why didn't you tell us the truth about where you're going tonight? Because I don't think I have to tell you. Every place that I'm going, I'm old enough to do what I want and to see who I want. Wait, am I, am I, am I hearing you this right? Yes, you are. All right, let's cut this short. Come on, we're getting out of here. No. I'm not going with you. You know, I appreciate your letting me come to see you. I didn't call you because I, I didn't think you would want to see me. Because you can't sit down? Uh, first of all, I, I want you to know how bad I feel about what happened to Camilla. I, I feel responsible, in part, for what's happened. You needn't take on the burden of guilt, Raven. I've assumed it all myself. Well, I just want you to know that... I care about what happens to you. I find that a little difficult to believe under the circumstances. Well, it's true, anyway. And I'm a little worried about what's going to happen, although Sky says that you might be granted immunity if, if you can find Cameron for the CEA. Mm. Oh, but I think that the chances of Cameron's returning are getting slimmer and slimmer. So the next time you see me, there may be bars between us and Mrs. Devereaux. That's another thing I wanted to talk to you about, um, the Mrs. Devereaux part. Excuse me, Mr. Devereaux. You have another visitor. You know this man? Yes, I do. Hello, Harry. Ian. You remember my wife, Raven? Yes. Hello, Raven. You look as stunning as ever. Well, thank you. Nice to see you again, Harry. Huh? Well, I haven't been in the States for four years. I thought I should pop in and say hello to an old friend. Uh, thank you, officer. That'll be all right. Harry, I assume there's another reason for your visit other, th other than to say hello. Yes, yes, I'm afraid there's a very important reason. I'm afraid retirement was more costly than I thought. I'm afraid I hate to admit it, but I'm simply low on funds. Pity. <laughs> I, I know you thought I was indecently wealthy, uh, and that's an impression that most of my friends had, and I never dissuaded them. Well, why not? Well, everyone loves a rich man, Mrs. Devereaux. Stores give him credit. Banks lend him money. Friends invite him to dinner. If you can't be rich, the next best thing is to make people think that you are. And a house in the Caribbean? The wine cellar? The butler? The house is mortgaged, the cellar is empty, and William works for, for pennies just to stay in the sunny Caribbean. And so, I thought I'd have to come back to the States and try to raise some cash. And just how do you propose to do that? Why, this way, Ian.
side. 